I ain't afraid of Satan. It's on. I'm telling you, I'm not afraid of the devil. I'm not afraid of the devil. I think we give the devil way too much credit in this world. And the devil ain't nothing but a liar. And he's got some of you scared to death to even move and, and be the man of God of your household and to be the man or woman of God that God has created you to be. And the church is missing its blessing because we're listening to the voice of the enemy. And the voice of the enemy has already been triumphed. It's already been defeated. It's already been said and finished and done. And it's time, I'm going to be honest with you, it's time that the church comes to life. It sure is. It's time that you and I come back to life. So today, I've I, I got an interesting word for you that the Lord dropped in my spirit. And uh, I, I want to thank you guys for being here today. And uh, this is the last sermon. I, I, I hate to see it go. Every, every series that I do, God just speaks radically to me. But today is the last sermon of the UFC, the ultimate fight for Christ. Um, but the battle will go on. There will still be hell in the hallway. There still will be times in your life, I guarantee, even after this series of sermons, you will battle. You will battle. But guys, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak life over you. I, I speak a mind of Christ over you. That man, when that wolf starts roaring, that you realize that the big bad wolf will never beat the big bad cross. Right. That you realize who you are in Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, and why don't you listen to me, if we get this, if we get this word that the Lord has been speaking to Elkhorn Baptist Church for a long time, we'll become a dangerous church. We'll, we'll become an unstoppable church. You will become an unstoppable individual. You will become an unstoppable mom and a dad full of the Holy Ghost and full of prayer in your life and bombarding heaven with the prayers of the Lord. That's what we need. We need the church to arise. And I feel that in my heart. How many of y'all watch this? 100% right here, watch this. How many of you believe we're probably living in the last days? Everybody will raise their hand on that one. But we go out and live like hell. We do what we want to do. And act the way we want to act. So today I, I got a word. Uh, I titled this sermon today, The Blood Speaks. The Blood Speaks. See, the blood of Jesus don't just save you. Watch this. The blood of Jesus keeps you. Y'all missed your blessing right there. The, the, the blood just don't save you. Hallelujah. The blood is what keeps you. Right. It, watch this. You didn't find God. God, God wasn't lost. God found you. Because you was a sinner backward and wayward and down. And watch this. Going to hell. I can't shoot you no straighter this morning, church. But praise be unto God. There was one day, I hope and pray, everybody under my voice, you felt your heart just a beating as fast as it could beat. I pray there was one day that you heard the voice of God calling you saying, I want to save you. I'm believing one day that you heard the, the becking call, the hound of heaven calling you and you bowed your knees and, and you confessed with your mouth that he's not just Savior, he is Lord of your life, Savior of your life, and soon coming King of your life. Amen? Somebody praise him in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I, listen, if you saved yourself, that means, listen to this, if you saved yourself, which you can't save your bad self, maybe that's why some of you are trying to fight the battles that you're fighting in your own flesh. But if God is in you and if God is for you, God fights the battles for you. If he's in you. I believe we got a lot of, a lot of preachers and teachers and people fighting their own battles. It's not your battle to be fought. All you got to do is stand still. Stand up with your armor on. And notice that Jesus, he took one punch and that was with the sword. The word of God is what stood with Jesus. See, everything that we've got today is hinged on the blood of God. Y'all realize that? Everything is hinged on the blood of Jesus Christ. Your marriage is hinged on Jesus. Hallelujah. Your children are hinged on Jesus Christ. This church is not my church. It's not the deacon's church. It's not the worship team's church. Hallelujah. It's God's church. It's God's house and God's people. Amen. We are hinged on the blood. We're hinged on the blood of God. And see, God wants to use you. 
God just don't want you to sit still on your salvation and on your blessed assurance and not do anything with God. Do you realize people are lost and dying and going to hell? Does that bother you? We'll see tomorrow at work. We'll see. We'll see how much that bothers Christians that every 60 seconds three souls die. And then we, we sit there and say, well, that's the preacher's job. Well, no, it's not. I've never read that in the B-I-B-L-E. That's our job. That's our job. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28 says these words. Jesus said, this is my blood of the covenant I made to you. God made a blood covenant to you and I. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 says, says, we have redemption through the blood and we are accepted. We are accepted through the blood. Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 says, and I, I know y'all can't turn as fast as I'm reading this. That's all right. Y'all just hang with me. It's truth. It says you can have peace through the blood. You can have peace through the blood. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. You just read in verse 22. It says, without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission of sins. Without the blood being shed, guess what? We would all die and go to hell. Is that pretty plain? But praise be unto God, he shed his blood, and he knows he loves the church. First Peter says, calls the blood precious. Precious blood. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 says, Jesus' blood freed us from all sin. Do y'all hear me? Jesus' blood, listen to me, freed us from all sin. That just tears me up. I don't know how his blood freed me. I am not a bondage of Satan. Sin does not have me because why? The blood has me. I'm under the oath and the covenant of God. I'm blood bought, sealed bought by Jesus Christ. It's the blood. Hallelujah. The blood is what freed me. I didn't free myself. The church didn't free me. No counselor freed me. No psychic 1-800-CALL-LITTLE-MAMA freed me. It's the blood, the precious, hallelujah, blood of Jesus Christ. I want y'all to get that in your spirit. If you don't hear anything else, this preacher says, it's the blood that frees you from all sin. That means when you stand before God, God sees the blood. And when you stand before God, you're not guilty. You are innocent because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Woo! I don't know what y'all feel, but I feel good. I feel the Lord. Hallelujah. Ding, ding. Woo. See, listen to this. If there was anything that you should be excited about, it's not a dang football game on Friday night that we should be excited about. It's not the UK basketball game that sells tickets out more than the church can even come for free to. It's not Oprah Winfrey on television that we should be excited about. Or Desperate Housewives that we should be excited about. But one thing this old boy is proud and excited about is that I am born again. I'm saved. I'm under the blood. I'm going to heaven. And nothing can stop me now. Okay? Don't miss your praise in this house. I, I plead the blood of God over everybody. I'm, I'm happy. I am happy. That I am on my way. I know a lot of Christians don't even they say they believe in heaven, but they still act like hell. I'm happy that I am free from sin. I am happy that I am under the blood covenant of God. And people tell me, they say, Brian, you get too happy. Brian, you get too excited. Brian, I don't know why you're a Baptist. You should be a Pentecostal. Hey, but let me tell you this morning, it's the blood of God that made me who I am today. It's the blood. And see, if you can't celebrate the blood, you're celebrating the wrong thing. You're celebrating the wrong thing. It's the blood. I want to get that to get in your spirit. It's the blood. Thank God for the blood. See, Satan don't fight who he already owns. Oops. Satan don't fight who he already owns. You say, Brian, I, my life's good. 
No, nothing's going on. Everything's fine. Paid the bills every month and drive a good old nice car and my house is clean. Hallelujah. And boy, praise be unto God. I'm, I'm good. Well, watch out. Because here's what I have found out. The more you give the Lord, the more the Satan wants to take away from you. The more surrendered you are unto God, now I'm not talking about Sunday. I'm talking about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Don't drop him off on Friday night. He won't find Jesus in the back car of a seat of a car on Friday night. Hey, that's good preaching. I know where to stop some of this uh, stuff going around. You put a B-I-B-L-E in the middle of you. It's kind of hard to cross over the blood to get to the flesh. Some of them need to put a Bible between you. Hallelujah. Preach it, preacher. I want to read something to you real quick. Y'all got it? Say amen. amen. How many of y'all feel the Lord already? Amen. How many of y'all glad y'all came to church today? Amen. Listen, this is not a show. This stuff right here, well, all y'all do is clap. Oh, my goodness. I can't think of nobody else I'd rather clap for. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all can't get your eyes off my red shoes, but it's all right. Genesis chapter 4, y'all there say amen. Genesis chapter 4, the blood, what? Speaks. Turn your neighbor and say, the blood still speaks. Come on, the blood speaks. Yeah, it speaks. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 through 10. I'm going to read this and we're going to have a little church. It says, verse 1, Adam lay with his wife Eve and she became pregnant. And gave birth to Cain. Everybody say Cain. Amen. She said, with the help of the Lord. Notice this. With the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a what? Man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks. And Cain worked the soil. He worked the field. In the course of time, Cain brought some, brought some fruit of the soil as an offering to the Lord. Now watch this. As an offering to the Lord. But Abel, everybody say, but Abel. Amen. Yeah, look what he did. Brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. He brought God his first fruits. He brought God his best. He brought God, he did not, let me say, he did not bring God his leftovers. He said, when I come to praise the Lord, I come to praise the Lord. When I walk into the house of worship, I got my praise on. When I come into the house, I will leave blessed. I will bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But Abel brought his best. But Cain, watch this. But on Cain and his offering did not look with, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very what? He was angry, mad, jealous, envy. And his face was downcast. His face was downcast. I'm going to give you all a good word. Hang with me just for a moment. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? You had the same opportunity that Abel did. Why are you angry? You can worship me with the same spirit as, as Abel does. Why are you angry this morning? Why is your face downcast? Why does it look like you've been, you, you've been sucking on a lemon? Uh -huh. If you do what is right, if you do, if you do, is the conditional God. Y'all watch this. If you do what God says to do, he's already done what he told you he would do. He's a conditional God. You, watch this, you will not have a blessed life by doing the opposite of what God says to take to get a blessing. If you want favor in your life, give God your first fruits. Give God your best. Hallelujah. Watch this. If you do what is right, if, if, if you do what is right, you will not, listen to this, you will not be accepted. But if, watch this, you do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. It desires to have you, but you must what? How are we going to master sin? Listen to me. How are we going to master sin? How are we, how are you, going to master that pornography problem you have in your life. Oops. Did y'all hear that? The blood what? Speaks. Amen. How in the world can you master the problems in your family? The blood speaks. 
The only way you can master anything is through the blood. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Can I read on just for a second? It says, you got to master. Verse, verse 8. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, watch this. Let's go out to my field. Let's go out to a field. Now watch, here, here's jealousy. Here's envy. Here's insecurity. Here's all these things coming up in Cain's life. Cain was the first murderer, matter of fact. Watch this. And while they were in the field, look what happened. Cain attacked his brother Abel, and he killed him. He attacked him. He killed him. And the Lord said to Cain, where's your brother Abel? Watch this. Here's what happened. Real quick, let me get God just fed me, so I'm going to give this to you. Here's what happened. Cain killed Abel, and then Cain was so embarrassed at what he'd done, he went and hid Abel's body. This is a word for y'all. Every time you're dealing with sin, you'll want to hide from it. You'll wait till your wife goes to bed to watch that bad show. Excuse me, am I preaching this morning? Every time you're involved in sin, here's the first thing you'll want to do is run away from the presence of the Lord. You will. You'll want to hide it. You'll want to hide it. I'm going to say it again. You'll want to hide it. I just wonder how many, how many people today are hiding things from other people and think you're getting away with it from the Lord. But I'm going to show you something. You will not get away from the Lord. You can't outrun Him. You can't outhide Him. Your sin will find you out. Somebody help me preach. Your sin will find you out. It will. You can't outrun your sin. It'll find you out. Watch this. He says, where's your brother Abel? He hid his body. He killed him. He hid him. He killed him. He hid him. Listen to this. Then the Lord said to Cain, where's your brother Abel? He said these words, I don't know. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. And then the second thing is this. Once you hide your sin, you'll lie to cover up your sin. You'll keep just lying and lying. And my mama was right because you can never remember the first lie that you told. And you'll lie and you'll lie. Y'all want to see. Here, watch this. I've been in ministry long enough. I can tell you this. You want to see when somebody is getting away from the Lord, they'll stop coming to church. They don't, Randy, they don't want to get where the anointing's at. Because I'm telling you, the anointing is what breaks the yoke. The, the anointing of God, when you walk into his house, and the Spirit of God, somebody help me, and it's, it fills the house, and he's in the house, and you can't stay in the house, all of a sudden they'll get up and go outside, and all of a sudden they'll miss their plane, and all of a sudden they'll leave the sanctuary. You know why? Because they're sin. Ooh, it's getting hot in here. It's the truth. You, you're, you're, you'll hide your sin. All of a sudden, you start lying about your sin. Am I preaching? Are y'all, are y'all okay? Y'all breathe on me just for a little bit, okay? Y'all give y'all a chance to breathe before I go on. Y'all ready? We'll get them to do some calisthenics or something, all right? That's what happens. All of a sudden, they'll, they'll quit coming to church. And they'll blame the preacher. They'll blame the deacons. They'll blame everybody else but what's happening to their life. Because you know why, Bill? They've, they've got sin in their life. They've got, they call it undercover sin. They call it hidden sin. But I'm telling you to find you out. It'll find you out. How many of y'all can testify? How many of y'all ever had some sin in your life that you tried to hide and it found you out? If your hand's not up, la, 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 la. Come to church and lie like that. Listen to this. Where am I at? I'm almost done. Verse 10. And the Lord said, what have you done? What have you done? Listen. Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Your brother's blood, your brother's blood, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. I'm going to hit something today that's... uh, needs to be hit, especially here in Camelsville, especially around the world. I believe this is a word that the Lord can use to touch many people if they'll listen. Cain had a murdering spirit. Now listen, this, is, this word's going to get in your spirit today, but it's got to be preached. Okay? Cain had a murdering spirit on him. He was the first murderer. 
Cain had a murdering spirit. Who else has a murdering spirit on him? Satan. Satan says in John 10, 10, I come to steal, kill, and destroy. The same spirit that was on Satan was the same spirit that was on Cain. He had a murdering spirit. And can I testify something today as a prophetic word unto this people and to what God is speaking unto my spirit? That spirit is still loose today right here at Elkhorn Baptist Church, right here in Campbellsville, Kentucky, in local churches. There's still a murdering spirit. This is a deep word. Y'all hang with me, okay? Because listen, if you only get half this sermon, you're going to get mad as a firecracker. And I don't want no emails come back at me and say, well, preacher said this and preacher said that. No, we're on DVD. We're live preaching to 40,000 people today. Let them talk about it too. There is a murdering spirit in churches today and in homes today. And let me tell you what I'm talking about. That spirit is still loose. That spirit, y'all listen to me. That spirit is still trying to murder marriages. That spirit, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but it's good. That, that spirit of murder is trying to, trying to murder somebody's career right now. It's trying to murder your finances right now. See, the problem is this. Satan is not your friend. I want to expose that spirit today. And somebody needs to testify with me that, my God, I've come too far for too long. I've cried too many tears. I bombarded heaven on the altar of heaven. I've grabbed the horns of the altar and I've hung on too long for the devil to stop me now. I'm going to shake you loose. I'm going to break you loose. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to praise him until something happens in my life. I'm going to shake that spirit loose. And I'm calling that spirit out today. You, know, you don't hear preaching like this in a lot of churches, but you know why? Because all that, listen to me. They want a Tinkerbell gospel. They want a gospel. If, you, if it feels good, do it. No, 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 no. It don't mean if it feels good, do it. If it's right, if it's morally right, if God backs it up, if it's in the Word, that's when you do it. Somebody praise His name. Hallelujah. I feel the Lord in this house. Right is right and wrong is wrong. And that's the problem with the church today. They believe the murdering spirit. That murder and spirit, listen to me, it starts out with, with a little bit of hatred, a little bit of envy, a little bit of jealousy. And I know what it's like. Because I have been so jealous of other pastors. Can y'all handle the truth? I don't know, man, I'm telling you. I'm going in some uncharted waters right now. I have been so jealous of other people in my life, it brought hatred in my life. And that hatred, if it did, if God did not deal with the hatred and the jealousy and the envy, won't y'all listen to me? It will, it's a murdering spirit. Teenagers, it's on the school system today too. The next thing you know, that murdering spirit, it's on you. And the next thing you know, you say these dreadful words, well, I hate them anyway. I know I may not be preaching to everybody in this house today. But I know Lord, what the Lord dropped in my spirit. It's a murdering spirit. The Lord wanted me to tell somebody, and they spoke it to me too. One drop of blood. Everybody say, one drop of blood. One drop is all it takes. One drop. Everybody say, I want a double dose. One drop would change your circumstance. One drop of blood, hallelujah, will change your situation. One drop of blood pleaded over your mind will change your mind. One drop of blood will change a dysfunctional family, and hallelujah, make them functional for Jesus Christ. One drop of blood will set a church up and set them on fire and preach the gospel in Jesus' name. One drop. One drop. See, one, no blood, no blood was, was sparing that day. Every drop of blood was used for something. Every drop of blood. I'm built on the rock. Hallelujah. You can't stop God. You can't kill God. Oh, you may talk about him. Huh, but you can't stop him. How many of you know that Jesus loves you? 
Come on. How many of y'all know? I don't care if you're Southern Baptist and here, raise your hand. If you know, if you know God loves you, come on. Amen. Now watch this. How many of you know Satan hates you? Amen. All right, you can put your hands down. I'm going to ask you a question. How come you're listening to him then? How come you're working for him then? How come you're doing the things that you know in your heart that is right to do? And today you're under my voice. I can feel it in my spirit right now. Some of you are battling a, a battle right now. You're in the ring, and I've preached my heart out, and I've tried to give you words straight from God. But you're still making bad choices, bad decisions in your life. And can I tell you something? That decision has a consequence. How many of you know if you smoke dope, you ain't going to have no brain? Come on. Good gracious. And see, here's the religious people. Y'all ready for the religious people? They're sitting there like this. Well, my God. I don't smoke dope. Well, quit acting like it then. <laughs> All right. Envy, jealousy, sin will lead to a murdering spirit. I don't say you have to get a knife up and kill because that's, that's wrong. But what I'm saying is you'll murder them with your mouth. You'll murder them with your tongue. You'll murder people. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. The Lord spoke into my spirit and said, Cain, <laughs> Cain thought he could shut up Abel. Y'all think about this? Most people just want to stop the voice of God. Most people say, if I can just talk about them, if I can just give them a bad name, if I can just murder their good name, and all of a sudden, here's what God spoke into my spirit. That Cain, what he was actually trying to do was stop the voice of Abel. Now think about how powerful this is, Glenn. All of a sudden, God shows up on the scene. Y'all got me say amen. Come on. Some of y'all y'all must ate turkey last night. Y'all still going. How in the world can you go to sleep in a church like this? Listen to this. God walks up on the scene. He says, Cain, where is your brother? And he tried to get smart with God. And he said, God, Abel, he's not, see, I'm not my brother's keeper. And all of a sudden, God says, what did you do? He said, well, God knows, don't he? Yeah, but God wants to hear. God wants to hear from his children, see his children. Y'all hang with me. And all of a sudden, God says, I know something's not right because, because Abel's blood speaking to me from the ground. You say, Brian, that is crazy. Blood don't talk. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, it does. How, you, how many of you know blood's got a voice? Hey, you, everybody here's got a voice. Everybody here today is doing something in your life. I can just see God look down. He says, I hear Abel's voice calling out to me from the ground. Cain thought he could kill Abel's voice. See, another man that I know, his name was Jesus Christ. He was on a cross. And they tried to stop his voice. They tried to stop the, him healing people. They tried to stop Jesus Christ. They even ran him out of his own hometown. A prophet's no good in his own hometown. That's what the Bible says. So listen to this. <laughs> I knew another man named Jesus. They, they put a spear in his side. They whipped him with 39 lashes. They, 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 they put thorns on his head. They hung him on a cross to try to shut his voice down. But how many of you know when that blood came down his face, that blood came down his body, even when they put him in the tomb, on three days later, hallelujah, the heavenly choir stepped out and started singing, He's alive! Yeah, you can't stop my God. Hey, he's alive. The blood's flowing. You say, preacher, you're excited. You, you think? People all the time say, I don't understand people to get excited. Really? I know a young man one time, about, it's been about six years ago, Kentucky and Louisville were playing football. Y'all remember that game? And man, it was down to the last wire. And all of a sudden, this is the truth. This dude got up on a table. And I mean, this dude was the most introverted. <laughs> I mean, didn't talk, didn't say nothing. And all of a sudden, I look over at this dude, Tori. He was on the table going like this. 
And I looked at him. And I said, really? Really? You get on top of a table and dance for a college football team? And when somebody acts crazy in church, we say, oh, sit down. Don't, you're, you're going, that's not good. Don't do that. Well, uh, Jennifer, tell me something. This week, did your husband lay holy hands upon you? Did the doctor give you a bad report? But by my God, said, I'll heal you. He laid his hands on you, and he got healed. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. I know you can't be me, and I can't be you. I don't want to be you, and you don't sure want to be me. But what I'm telling you is we serve the same daddy. What I'm telling the church of Jesus Christ, listen to me. When God made a promise, he backed it up with the blood covenant. Every promise in that Bible is mine, saith the Lord. It is yours, saith the Lord. You've got to name it and claim it and stand up and say, God, I believe it in the name of Jesus. I hear preachers all the time say, well, don't play the name it and claim it game. I already got it. Do y'all hear me this morning? I got it. I got the Lord in me. You know what the Lord, you know what you should have done in this skit? You should have just went. (laughs) And then went. (laughs) No, you just just went. (laughs) We don't realize the power that's in this house today. Never thought I'd have to get up in front of a, a, a church that is God-filled and spirit-filled and say, you know what? We've got the power in the name of Jesus Christ. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I speak life and peace and blessings and favor. Hey! And anointing of God over your life. And you've got to believe it and you've got to accept it. They can't put my God in a tomb. He'll get out. He owns the daggone rock. You, I, <laughs> I feel the Lord in this house today. I feel a shaking going on. I do. I don't care what anybody says anymore. If I feel the Lord, I'm going to claim it in the name of Jesus Christ. The church is back down for way too long. See, we say we got power to walk on water. I wonder the last time y'all stepped off in some. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Greater is he that is in me. He is in the world. And all of a sudden you speak death. When people call me and they start complaining, here's what I say. Y'all ready for this? Somebody in the nursing home will trade places with you. Well, my marriage just ain't no good. Maybe if you start praying blessings over your marriage and start acting like it's God's God marriage, things will start happening for you. Y'all got it? Here's what God spoke into my heart, and I'm done. Greg, y'all come. Glenn, over who's going to play. I often wonder, why did Abel have to die in Cain's field? Why did Abel have to die in Cain's field? I started thinking about that, and I read a lot of commentaries, and guess what? None of them had an answer. None of them had an answer. Y'all with me say, I got you, preacher. Come on. Just give me five more minutes. I'm done. I promise. Five more minutes. Come on. Hang with me. Why did Abel have to get killed in Cain's field? Y'all remember? (laughs) Y'all remember that that Cain had the spirit of Satan on him. Y'all remember that? You remember that? It's a good word. Listen to this time. So he, he killed Abel. And the blood had to go down into the soul at that time. You remember, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But there's a comma in that verse in John chapter 10, verse 10. It says, but God, hallelujah, comes to give life and life more abundant. What God told me is the things that Satan used to do to you, he will not be able to do no more because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody praise him. The things that Satan used to be able to do, he can't do. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. 
because of the redemption power of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. The thing that Satan used to do, he can't do no more. The reason why Satan is having a blast with the local church is because the church is allowing Satan to have a, low, a blast. You give me, you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it. You give me pastors that will bombard heaven and deacons full of Jesus Christ and members that love the Lord, blessed be his name, and we'll make a difference like never before. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say it, y'all ready? Elkhorn, if you're, and if you're listening by radio, I'm, I want them to write this down. We've not seen nothing yet. We have not seen nothing yet. Because the things that Satan used to do, he can't do no more. That's right. He can't do no more. He can't do it. He can't. Oh, hallelujah. He may try to kill my flesh, but hallelujah, when God looks at Brian Keith Rafferty, he looks up and says, Brian is speaking because he's under the blood of Jesus Christ. My bl the blood speaks. The blood speaks. Everybody say the blood speaks. Come on. Stand to your feet. Come on. Come on. Stand to your feet. Listen to me. Some of you may be under my teaching today, under my voice today, and you may not understand, but listen to me. The blood speaks. The blood speaks. What did you do to your brother? I'm not my brother's keeper, Lord, but I can still hear his voice. See, some of you are going through a battle right now in your flesh. I got good news for you. Your spirit, your spirit has to rise above your flesh. The Bible says you whip your flesh into condition. You make, watch this, you make your flesh obey your spirit. Y'all got me? Please listen to me this morning, I promise you. I do not want nobody to walk out that door the same way you walked in. Some of you are battling and you're battling and you're battling. You got your fleshly boxing gloves on. You may be a guest here today and say, my God, I don't know what's going on. I hope and pray when you walk out, you'll say, you know what? They may have been loud. They may have been crazy. But blessed be the name. They love the Lord at that church. That's what I want them to say. And I really feel in my heart. We got a lot of fleshly Christians. If we don't get our way, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Y'all watch this. It's not about you. It's not about your pastor getting his way. It's about God getting his way. And today I really believe there's a murdering spirit that's loose. It's loose, Robbie Bell. You say, Brian, how do you know it's loose? When you got people killing children, that spirit's still loose. That's right. When you've got terrorists running into buildings, and wanting to kill people, that spirit's still in the United States. That's right. But if y'all will listen to me this morning, the blood speaks. The blood speaks. When I got saved, I got a blood transfusion. When I got saved, my blood that was in me, I got a blood transfusion. And now I don't belong to Brian Keith Rafferty no more. Right. I don't belong to Elkhorn Baptist. That's right. I belong to the Lord. That's right. I'm under the blood covenant of the Lord. Right. And my blood speaks, hallelujah. And I don't know where you're at this morning, what you're dealing with this morning, but can I tell you blood speaks? If you'll quit paying, y'all listen to me, if you'll quit paying more attention to the bad stuff, and start giving God praise on the good stuff. I promise you, you'll praise yourself silly one day. That's right. I guarantee you.
And I would do this if y'all would work with me and have time, but I know y'all won't. I'd let every one of y'all come by me and tell me something bad. And I'd tell you something good. I would spank you with the Bible. Well, Brian, I, my, I'm just, I, I just don't feel good. Brian, I, I'm, I'm sick in my body. Listen, I know people are sick. But the blood speaks. Why people come in and leave the same way they did when they came in, I have no clue. You know, I do. You know what it is? It's pride. It's pride. Pride to make you stay in your seat. Pride to send you to hell. But we need some people today to get on their knees and say, God, hey, it may not look too good, but I'm going to praise your name. I'm going to bless your name. I'm going to do whatever I got to do to That's give right. you praise, honor, and glory. That's right. The blood speaks. So whether you're outside of the ring, or inside of the ring. Or back outside of the ring. No matter where you're at. Blessed be the Lord. It's not your battle. It's not your battle. It's not your battle. Yeah, it's not your battle. It's the Lord's. How many of y'all believe that word? Drop your swords. Drop your knife and quit cutting others. And I promise you. You'll see some amazing things happen in your life. And I feel the Lord. I'm, he's just staring at me. I can't shut up. I'm sorry. I'm not, no. I'm going to preach it. There's a murdering spirit. And I pray today in the name of Jesus, you find it out where it's at. And you hear the blood speak louder this morning. They couldn't kill God. My prayer is that all of us, me first, will get it right today. Whatever you're battling, whatever you're dealing with, won't you come? You said, Brian, I'm waiting for you to shut up. It's not going to happen. Come. Come on. Man, today, come on. You can't tell me one person's the only person God. Come on. If you've got something in your life, you've been battling something in your life, it's time for the blood to speak in your life. It's time for the blood to speak. Make good choices. Make good decisions. Don't stand there and say, oh, I hope sister so-and-so gets it right. How about this? How about you get it right? Come on. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord this morning. They can't kill y'all. Y'all believe that? They can't, Kurban, they can't kill you. Your blood still speaks. Hallelujah. My blood speaks. I plead the blood of God over marriages this morning. I plead the blood of God over you this morning. Come on, y'all come. Let's go. One prayer away of your answer. One prayer away of your answer. If you're lost, come on. You say, man, I don't even got Jesus. You come. Don't die and go to hell in this house. Don't die and go to hell in this house. It's not worth it. Come on. It's not worth it. If you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you come. You come and say, I need Jesus Christ. I got to get saved. I got to get saved today. I want to plead the blood of God over you today. Come on. <laughs>